We ready? All right. Good to see everybody back tonight. Amen. Good to be here. Appreciate what the Lord done in our midst this morning. Man, the Lord helped us this morning. Amen. Let's take a hymn book. If, if you've got a song in your heart, let's take the hymn book and turn to page 407. And let's sing that song, Because He Lives. Amen. <clears throat> Praise His name. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives, all fear is gone because I know Cross the river, I'll fight life's fight, no war with pain. And then, as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, and I'll know He lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living. Just because he lives. Amen. Good job, y'all. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Again, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. If you're visiting tonight, thank you for coming our way. Uh, it's our uh, heart's desire that you feel a touch from the Lord. Because if you feel a touch from the Lord, there's no other touch like his touch. Amen. No one can do you like Jesus can do you. Amen. Let's, let's take a few prayer requests. I, I would ask you all to remember Mom. She's uh, uh, under the weather. She's got some uh, cellulitis in one of her legs, infection in one of her legs, and uh, it's swelled up and given her a pretty hard time. We was over there a while today, and um, 
uh, trying to console her and appreciate uh, Mike and Katie taking her lunch and, and their care, appreciate that. And so I want y'all to remember mom, if you will. Any other prayer requests? <coughs> yes, absolutely. Thirty-nine years old. She's had a, a stroke. Yes. Yes, Brother Darrell. No doubt. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Heard about that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Anyone else? Good to see Brother Martin. I pray Brother Martin's doing better, doing good. Amen, brother. Amen. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's remember uh, Brother Van Johnson. Uh, he was in here, uh, I think, this past Wednesday night complaining with his back and he thought he was just having some back trouble come to find out he he was uh, uh, diagnosed with shingles and um, if anybody in this building has ever had body, anybody had shingles they 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 are no fun at all so pray for brother van <clears throat> yes 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 amen yes amen all right, remember Ruth and outpatient and no, you're fine. Go right ahead.
Amen. Yes, it will. Yes, we can. Amen. We appreciate you, Miss Doris. Appreciate your love for the Lord. thing about Miss Doris that I like she believes the God of the Bible the God of the Bible don't change he's the same today yesterday and he'll be God tomorrow amen praise the Lord amen anyone else amen praise the Lord yes the Holy Spirit <clears throat> the Holy Spirit can do what you and I would never be able to do Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Let's remember those those uh, men and women. Um, I've not got the word yet, but I, I uh, my aunt and uncle Connie and Ed Williams live in Tennessee. I know that Connie uh, just got out of the hospital with COVID, and they took Ed to the hospital today, and uh, so that seems it seems to be real. And, of course, we know it is, but, but continue to pray for that God will move this. Uh, <clears throat> I, I could say to the, the Lord tonight, Lord, you've got my attention. Amen. You've got my attention. You, you tell me. You tell me what to do, and you've got my attention. Praise the Lord. So just uh, continue to pray for these, that, that this virus. So the Lord will move it on out of here. Uh, yes. Unspoken, yes, unspoken, of course. Several unspoken, amen. Yes, <clears throat> yes. Patsy's, Patsy's not feeling well. Yeah, all right. Roger, yeah, let's remember Brother Roger. And those that may be watching, by the way, of social media, Miss Ruth and Faye and just different ones, we, we love them. Jenny, continuing to pray for Jenny. And uh, her family. Miss Willa, yes. 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 Amen. Miss Eula, yes. Remember Jimmy, Sonny's uh, husband? Yes. Oh. Yeah, Claudette's being a caregiver. Claudette, remember her. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's pray together tonight. I'm sorry. Yes. God knows. Yes, He does. 
Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to pray. <clears throat> thank you, Lord, for the sweet hour of prayer that we can come to you tonight in faith and believing. <clears throat> Lord, we have many things, Lord, that uh, in our minds, on our hearts, Lord, uh, the sicknesses, Lord, that we've seen. Lord, I pray, Lord, tonight in the name of the mighty Son of God, uh, Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that healing, that the healing waters, Lord, would flow, Lord, in and amongst our church. Lord, we pray for those that are suffering, Lord, uh, with physical ailments. <clears throat> Lord, I pray for those that have loved ones, Lord, that have passed away this week and that have gone, gone on, Lord, as my pastor used to say, to the silent city of the dead. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, just uh, give a peace, <clears throat> Lord, to these families, a peace that passes understanding. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the opportunity to pray. Lord, I pray for those, Lord, that uh, are possibly dealing with COVID and those that have this COVID. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, uh, Lord, if it be your will, Lord, that, that you would drive back this virus. Lord, that you would just um, astound the scientists, Lord, and our government, Lord, by this thing, Lord, uh, going into a retreat mode. Lord, we know, Lord, that the, uh, the doctors and the scientists say that we're moving into the worst time of year, Lord, because of the weather. And, and, but, Lord, you're the one that controls things. Lord, you're in control of the weather. Lord, this virus, Lord, is no match for you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just take it, Lord. It is our desire, Lord, that you would take it, Lord, and cast it aside and push it back. Lord, that we would be able, Lord, to continue worshiping you in your house, continue loving you in your house, continue uh, reading and studying the word. Lord, we want to do that, Lord, as brothers and sisters in Christ to meet together. Uh, yes, Lord, if we have to, Lord, we can worship in our homes. Lord, that does not make us love you any less. Lord, that does not make you any less powerful. But Lord, it is our desire, Lord, to be among the brethren. Lord, you tell us, Lord, how sweet it is, Lord, for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And Lord, that is what our desire is. Lord, teach us, Lord, not to take for granted, Lord, the privilege. Lord, as someone has already said today, not take for granted the privilege to come to your house. Lord, we are an imperfect people. We understand that, but we are serving a perfect Lord, a perfect Savior. Lord, you're perfect in all your ways. Lord, your, uh, your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We understand that your ways are higher than our ways. And Lord, I, I pray, Lord, for the children. Lord, I pray for the young people, Lord, that are dealing, Lord, with these uh, terrible uh, addictions, Lord, that uh, seems to be... Uh, trying to confiscate a generation. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would push back the enemy. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would raise up men and women, Lord, that would wave the bloodstained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wave it high and wave it strong. Lord, help us to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Help us, Lord, to be a John the Baptist that would say, make ye the path straight and prepare ye the way of the Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to be able, to, Lord, to have faith, Lord, with believing and not doubting, Lord, that you are who you say you are. Lord, to push back, Lord, these, these drugs, Lord, and these, these, these spirits, Lord, that wants to take a generation away. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit of God would be outpoured, Lord, on this nation one more time. Lord, that the Holy Spirit would have His way, Lord, in Gaston County. Lord, I'd love to see, Lord, I was passing it this week, Lord, that new ball stadium that they're building right down the road. Lord God, that's a good place for a revival. That's a good place to see the saints of God gather and a mighty revival start in this town. Lord, I pray, Lord, that something would happen, Lord, that we would continue to fall on our face and plead, Lord, for a mighty move of God. Lord, we don't want to move of man. Lord, we've seen what man can do. We want to move of God, Lord, because we know and we have seen, hallelujah, what you can do. We can see, Lord, that, hey, hallelujah, Lord, that we can go forward with you because you are our captain. You are the captain of our salvation. Lord, we understand, Lord, that you fight our battles. Lord, we cannot fight them among ourselves. Lord, thank you once again for the privilege to pray. 
Lord, bless all the ones, Lord, maybe that I've forgotten in this prayer. Lord, thank God that you don't forget anything. Lord, we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Brother George, you and Zoe want to do our offering <coughs> right quick. We'll take up a, give you an opportunity to give an offering. And uh, Brother George, you pray. Something good <clears throat> All my confusions He understood All I had to offer Him Was brokenness and strife But He made something Beautiful of my life If there ever were dreams that were lofty and noble, they were my dreams at the start. And the hopes for life's best were the hopes that I'd harbored down deep in my heart. But my dreams turned to ashes, my castles all crumbled, my fortune turned to loss so i wrapped it all in the rags of my life and laid it at his cross sing it something beautiful something good all my confusion he understood all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife but he made something beautiful of my life for dreams that were lofty and noble they were my dreams at the start. And the hopes for life's best were the hopes that I'd harbored down deep in my heart. But my dreams turned to ashes, my castles all crumbled, my fortune turned to loss. So I wrapped it all in the rags of my life and laid it at his cross something beautiful something good all my confusion he understood all i had to offer him was brokenness and strive, but he made something beautiful of my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all come on. Praise the Lord. talking to Miss Annette, uh, my grandmother lived over here on Graham Street, uh, right off of Bethel City Road, my grandmother uh, 
raised five children. Uh, she had four boys and a girl. And uh, Roger was the youngest of, of, of the boys. And they were all, all those boys uh, were all very rambunctious, to say the least. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, the, the fighting kind and the drinking kind. And uh, Roger uh, had run from the Lord for a long time. And uh, he, I remember seeing Roger, I was probably about Zoe's age, running into Roger, and Roger coming in, and him coming in and out of, of Grandmother's house, and, and walking toward, and some of you won't know where this is either, <clears throat> but the old BNR barbecue, that used to be the hangout uh, for a lot of them. And uh, my grandmother, uh, she was a Pentecostal preacher. She uh, 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 pastored a church for 30 years. She wasn't a fly-by-nighter. She was the <laughs> real deal. Right. And uh, she pastored uh, Crescent Lane Church of God right down on Crescent Lane, down below the old Myrtle School. But anyway, uh, the Lord got to dealing with Roger. And uh, Roger, Roger had come to the altar one Sunday and uh, give his heart and life to the Lord. Amen. And that was his theme song. He, he would he would, he would sing that song, and I, I took the rags of my life, I wrapped them up, and I laid them at the cross, and he made something beautiful out of my life. Amen. And he can still do that. Yes, he, he can. He can still make some, take the rags yeah. of our life and make something beautiful. Amen. 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 I thank him for that, too. Yeah, go ahead, Jenny. anyone who's ever seen the mountains of their sin just disappear for anyone who's ever felt the hand of heaven reach down through their fear and dry their tears oh any life once empty now finds itself alive and full of song victory song then you'll understand the reason for the way the saints of God may carry on. So if I shout, no, I'm shouting from a heart that's been washed clean. If I run, no, I'm running from a past that's been redeemed to a world of my look crazy. There's just no telling what you're going to do.
to I want to quickly uh, finish that uh, real short story about my uncle Roger. As Kathy was mentioning, Kathy, I think he was 21 when he drowned. He had come to to uh, know the Lord and started living for the Lord. And um, as a 21-year-old single man living for the Lord. Uh, will be a challenge to say the least, but uh, he went on to get married. And uh, but anyway, uh, I remember one day I was at uh, Mama's house. Mom and my mom and dad worked a lot, and I spent a lot of time at Mama Williams' house. Roger come in one day. Roger worked. I, I believe it was at Wicks during the time. Not sure, Wicks or Danoka, one of the plants around. And I remember him coming in the back door telling Mama, he said, Mama, uh, the, the Lord got up with me on my heister today. Roger drove a forklift. And uh, she said, he did. He said, uh, yeah. He said, the Lord told me that he was coming to get us he was coming he's coming the Lord said he was coming and it wasn't but just a few days later we you know how you take things and you, it just rolls off your back it wasn't but just a few weeks later maybe a month or so I'm not sure of the timeline but Roger and uh, a couple of his friends and brothers were fishing at Lake Wiley and uh, it was I believe it was February a real real cold time of the year make a long story short a wake off of another boat they was in a John boat and uh, the boat uh, capsized and uh, all of them made it out but Roger and uh, a very very terrible hard time in our family uh, during that time but during that time, my dad and his younger brother, Kenneth, come to the Lord. And see, through, through God saving Roger, sometimes we don't understand, we don't understand this thing about death. But see, God, and, and God loves us, don't, don't get me wrong, but God's concerned with eternal matters. Because eternity is a long time compared to this life. And God's working and God, I never will forget uh, this. Now, I know some of you here probably don't believe in this, but I do. And I'm gonna, but I'm going to tell it. We were all gathered in the house at Graham Street, the whole family. And uh, my grandfather, you know, us being Pentecostals, uh, believed uh, heavily in the moving and operation of the Spirit. And uh, my grandpa was kind of a silent type. He loved God, but you didn't hear much, uh, emo you didn't see much emotion out of, out of him. His name was S.K. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning. And people were gathered around the coffee table. All his grand younglings was lay laying in the floor. There was probably 15 or 20 in that house. Two o'clock in the morning, mourning for the loss of Roger and trying to understand, God, you saved him. Why did you take him? Why did you take him? Well, <clears throat> it wasn't long. And I, like I say, I was about Zoe's age, maybe a little bit younger. And I heard my grandfather began to speak a message in tongues. He was in the kitchen around the table. And I was laying in the living room floor and I never heard I'm gonna tell you right now I've never heard nothing like that in my life never heard I never heard the authority in the voice and never heard a language like that in my life not even until today and after that passed and I understand that folks don't believe in this and, and but that's irrelevant right now uh, but an interpretation came after that and 
the interpretation, I can't remember it all, but one of the main phrases in that interpretation, I took him that souls would be won to the kingdom of God. And also I took him to be a jewel in my crown. And I thought, you know, here, you know, that, but God, he still, we still serve that kind of God. We still do. If, that kind of God is available to you if you want that kind of God. If you don't want that kind of God, he will make himself, he will fit into your box. But if you want that kind of God, he's still available. And, and just like that song, that Roger's life, giving his life to the Lord, it's still touching lives. And, and this too, folks, and I'll be quiet. We never know, we never know what effect we'll have on somebody here in this life until we get to heaven. Some may say, well, I'm not making a difference. I'm not, oh, man, you don't never know. May maybe somebody tap you on the shoulder, Brother Jimmy, when you get to heaven and just heard you speak a word about the Lord and you were the reason that that person came to Christ. I praise the Lord. I just wanted to share that with you. I got a special treat for you tonight. Uh, I, as the Lord laid it on my heart this morning, um, I was listening to Elizabeth speak this morning concerning the Sunday school uh, lesson that y'all had uh, in the book of Isaiah and um, the particular section of scripture. Uh, and I'm familiar with that as she was going over with me uh, what happened and how such a good time uh, in the Sunday school lesson that y'all had this morning. And uh, I asked her if she would share that uh, with us tonight. So uh, I'm anxious to, to hear what the Lord has laid on her heart. And uh, honey, you come on and, and uh, you give us what the Lord has, has give you. Man, you come on. Good evening. Can everyone hear me all right? Usually you don't have any trouble hearing me. So um, I don't, the my mic is probably not turned up too much, doesn't, doesn't have to be. Um, it's good to be in the house of the God, uh, good to be in the house of God tonight. That good singing, uh, it's, it's wonderful to see the faces in, in church tonight. And uh, I am, uh, I'm going to ask Brother Don to pray um, because I'm going to teach. Some of you have heard this this morning. But I'm going to teach this lesson again tonight. It's a wonderful lesson. And everything in God's word is that comes from the Old Testament, the New Testament, wherever it comes from in God's word is relevant to us today. And um, I'm going to ask Brother Don if he'll open us in prayer. Amen. We're going to be in chapter 37 of Isaiah. Chapter 37. For those of you who um, are not attending Sunday school, we uh, started attending uh, some weeks back, and um, we have enough room to social distance in our Sunday school classes, and it's so important to study the Word of God. Um, we hear the preaching uh, of the Lord uh, from our pastor on Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings and Wednesday night, but we also need to be studying the Word of God, and that is what Sunday school does. It's a training hour to dig deeper into the Word of God and to give us more knowledge and more wisdom as to what he has to say. And a lot of people, and I've heard some pastors, 
say that the Old Testament is no longer relevant. Well, the Old Testament speaks of Jesus. Amen. The Old Testament, if you, if you know it, prophesies in Jesus. And Jesus is first mentioned in the book of Genesis. So please do not let anyone tell you that the Old Testament is not relevant to us today. It is. The book in its entirety is to be taught and to be preached. The quarterly is actually uh, from uh, our last quarter, but because it was on Isaiah, I said we've got to go through this quarterly. Because Isaiah is a very prophetic book. It tells us many, many uh, prophecies. One of the greatest being Jesus. How he would come. Who he, who he would be to us. But in chapter 37, it's also a book of judgments. And God wasn't judging the Gentiles. He was judging his people. The people that he had handpicked. And this particular area, at this point in history, the Egyptians had arisen back to great power. And in just a, a couple of lessons ago, Judah had gone to Egypt and said, uh, we think we're going to need your help. The king of Assyria, we're afraid, is going to rise up against us. Egypt had become a very strong military power again in the world. They had created new weaponry. They had new faster chariots. They were led by a king of Ethiopia who was very skilled in warfare. They had created new types of swords You see, they were tactical in their warfare even back then. The Assyrians were the next greatest power. They had come up with the armor, the metal armor, like scales of a fish where the armor was stacked in between where a spear or an arrow could not hardly penetrate. So Judah had, had gone to Egypt and said, we're, we're going to need your help. And God was very displeased with that because he said, you are putting your faith and your trust in men and not in me. So Judah had to back up a little bit. And Assyria was conquering nation after nation. They were laying waste to cities. They were carrying people off as slaves. Now this is the background for our lesson that we had this morning. And I didn't get into all that detail this morning. But this is some things that we need to know and understand. Because just as countries and nations want to conquer one another today, they're just doing it in a different way. Back then, they were conquering one another. But in chapter 37, I'm going to be reading out of uh, verses 14 through 20. And I'm going to read this, and then we're going to discuss 
in sections some of the scripture. And I'm reading out of our Sunday school quarterly. And if you do not have one, please, if you don't attend Sunday school, please come. If you don't have a quarterly, please ask for one. Isaiah is one of the, it's one of my most favorite books of the Bible. And it has some of the most interesting and some of the most deep subjects. Anything, anything that touches us physically can also be compared to spiritual, the spiritual world in our lives. You must understand that. But in Isaiah 37, 14 through 20, Hezekiah was the king of Judah at this time, and he has received a letter. It said, And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries and have cast their gods into the fire. But they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, save us from his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. Hezekiah, king of Judah, receives a message. And it wasn't a good message. And it struck fear into his heart. Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. There were some envoys, there were some messengers sent from Assyria that gave him a letter. How many of you have had a crisis in your life? How many of you have had a problem or a situation arise in your life that a messenger has brought to you a letter? And you really don't know what to do. How many times in our crisis or our situation do we try to handle it ourselves? Too many times. I told my Sunday school class this morning, I wish I could make a list. But in saying that, I can tell you this, everyone else has a list We have never seen a day in time in which we're living now. Never. The world is changing. Our own government is changing and not into something better. Hezekiah received the letter. Did Hezekiah grab a pen or did he call for someone to write back? 
The first place he went to was to the temple. Why well, go to the temple? That's where God was. That's where God is. And it said that Hezekiah went to the temple. And this is what he did. He spread it out before the Lord. And he said, Lord, I need to talk to you. In your trials, in your situations, in your crises, do you talk to God? Do you understand how effective prayer can be? Do you understand that God's a living God and that he still listens and hears his people? Your prayers do not fall on the deaf ears of a dead God. He hears you when, he, when you pray to him. That's one of our ways of communicating with our Lord. It says after he read it that Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord and Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord. And this was his prayer. O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwellest between the cherubims. Right there at the Ark of the Covenant where God would reside. That's where Hezekiah had gone near. He said, I know that you sit between the cherubims. I know where you are. Do you know where your God is? <laughs> thou art the God and even thou alone. You're the only God. I know that, Lord. I know you're the only one. He said, the king of Assyria is threatening us. He's conquering all these other nations. He's sweeping across the face of the earth. Do you see anything sweeping across the face of our earth today? Does it look like a dark cloud? He said, and you've conquered them. He, 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 Hezekiah said, he has conquered them. The king of Assyria is conquering these nations. He's casting their gods into the fire, but they're not really gods anyway because they're made of wood and stone and made with men's hands. They're not really gods. And you are the only God. He was insulting the almighty, holy God by threatening Judah. And he didn't just want you. He wanted Jerusalem. Let us remember that God said, I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. We better pray that this country, whichever way it goes, better continue to be on the side of Israel and God's people. Hezekiah said, Now therefore, O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth 
may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. How many times have you put your situation in God's hands before trying to deal with it yourself? It's hard to do, isn't it? It's hard to do. It doesn't work out like we think it's going to work out all the time either. I prayed for my 15-year-old. I said, and be careful what you pray for now because God listens. He hears. He listens. I said, she's getting a little wild. I said, I, we, I prayed for a while to help me be a better mother. I prayed for a while, help Jeff to be a better father. We were doing, it, we were doing everything we knew to do. She was raised in church. She knew what was right. She knew what was wrong. And I said, Lord, now whatever it takes. And we watched a helicopter, Sally. We just made it to the ball field. We watched a helicopter lifting off with her to carry her to Charlotte to the trauma unit. I don't know how many of you saw her this morning. She's pinned together. She had reconstructive surgery on her face. She had to have reconstructive surgery on her face. She has a piece of metal embedded in her skull. They said would never. I thought they put, I thought they put that in her head. I thought they had to put that in her head. When we went to her oral surgeon for the ma massive amounts of surgery she had to have, I said, when did they put that in? And the doctor looked at me, and he reached over Jeff, and he said, Honey, that's part of the wreckage. Her pelvis is pinned together. She has a rod in her right femur. She suffered a traumatic brain injury and came home on a fourth grade level. They said, that's as good as it's going to get, Alicia. But she graduated college. And she went on to work with Jeff at the store. And there were times that I would stop by that store, Gina, and she'd have two 50-pound bags of feed propped up on that. She's not a little girl, is she? <laughs> that's good. Helping her daddy carry feed run the register, order the parts for all the... What I'm telling you is when we, when we got to that hospital in Charlotte, I didn't ask the doctors what I could do because I'm not a doctor. I said, here she is, God. Here she is. I opened my letter before the Lord. I opened my letter before God Almighty. That's what we have to do. If there was ever a time for the people of God to pray, it is in this day and time. We look at this coronavirus as a pandemic, but we have a pandemic called drug addiction that is sweeping across this land. We were, it, we were never told this would be easy. But Hezekiah said, Lord, show everyone else. Show these other nations. Show the king of Assyria who you really are. Isaiah 37, verses 30 through 32. 
God was getting ready to tell Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, this is, this is what you're going to do. You're going to have to trust in me. This is what you're going to do. And this shall be a sign unto thee. You shall eat this year such as groweth of itself, and the second year that which springeth up of the same. And then in the third year, sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, shall do this. So even though the king of Assyria was waging war <clears throat> on Judah, God was telling Hezekiah, this is what's going to happen, but it's, the land is going to be fully restored. <clears throat> In that day and time, one of the tactics that the enemy would use is they would begin to destroy all the crops. How can the army fight if it doesn't have food? Jeff was talking this morning about some of you don't remember when prayer was taken out of school. I remember those sitting in front of the TV and watching on the news when I was, when I was a little girl, Russia, when they had no food in the grocery stores. Do you all ever remember seeing any of that footage years ago where people would wait in line for blocks and blocks to get a loaf of bread? And by the time they got there, they were, the, the shelves were bare. It better be a sign unto you. I remember that footage. I remember watching the news of that communist country. Cut the food and cut the power. Cut off the water supply. <coughs> Control the people. They would destroy the crops. But God said, you're going you're gonna to be able to eat what you sow this year. You're going to have, I am going to keep you. You're going to be fed. You're going to have what you need. And then you are going to be completely restored. If you place your faith and trust in me. There's no other place that we can go and put our trust and our faith in. I trusted the doctors to, to help. I trusted the doctors with some knowledge and wisdom. But when we first walked into the hospital in Charlotte, they didn't take us to a nice clean room, Arlene, where Jessica was nice and tidy. They didn't expect her to live. So they took her into the emergency room where her torn and cut clothes were thrown laying in the floor where she was already on a ventilator. Where there was pieces of glass still sticking out of her, Sonny. They had her on a stainless steel gurney with a little sheet thrown over her because they did not expect her to live. She had a collapsed lung, so there was this big, long piece of metal lying over in the floor. I said, it had blood all over it. I said, what is that? He said, we had to get into her ribs to inflate her lung. He said, that's used to pierce through to the lung. Do you think at that time that all my hope and all my trust and all my faith was in the doctors? Absolutely not, Sally. I said, oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. Here's my letter. Here's my letter. Show them who you are. Let them know who you are, oh, Lord God. 
And he did. And he restored her. God's a mighty God. And Kathy, he hears us when we pray. He hears every word that falls off the end of our tongue. He hears everything in our heart that we don't say. We don't even have to say it. Because of the almighty God he is. And he told Hezekiah, it might be rough for a couple years, but it's going to be all right. And I'm going to restore you. I'm not going to let them touch you. He's not going to touch you. So from there, let's go to verses 33 through 35. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. Now, you can apply this to your life any way that you want to. But I'm applying this. This is this, the old Satan. When something comes into my life that I know, that I know I have to give to, to the Lord, give it to him first. Give it to him first. Hezekiah did not call for his wise men. He did not call for any, uh, any of the high-ranking officials in his government. He went to the temple. He went to the altar. He laid his letter before God Almighty. And this is what God had to say about the king of Assyria. He shall not... Come into this city. He shall not come into this city. Nor shoot an arrow there. I'm not even going to let him shoot an arrow. Not one. nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. You know, that back then they would lay a siege to the city. The enemy would surround it, encamp around it. Nothing went in and nobody came out. If they came out, you just yeah, went ahead and killed you. So no food could go in, no water could go in, no, and no, nothing could come out. God said, he's not going to be able to do that either. Not going to let him do it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. God said he's going he's gonna to leave the same way he came. And it's going to be quick. He didn't know who he was dealing with. The king of Assyria did not know the God of Hezekiah. And God said in verse 35, For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake, to save it for me and for my servant David's sake. For my servant David's sake. Do you know who that was referring to also? Who came from the lineage of David? Jesus. Jesus. God said, I'm going to save it for my name's sake and for Jesus' sake. You won't, he won't come into this city. He won't be able to shoot an arrow into this city. He will not be able to encamp about and around this city. He will flee the same way as he came. And he did.
God sent an angel. If you read on down through the scripture, God sent an angel. And 185,000 Assyrians were wiped out in one night. And the king of Assyria didn't walk. He didn't say, well, I think we better leave. <laughs> no, no. The Bible says he fled. He ran. I guarantee you that on his horse or on his chariot, that was probably the fastest that horse had ever gone. It probably killed it by the time it hit He fled for his life and Jerusalem was saved by God Almighty for his sake and for Jesus' sake. I don't care what's going on in our lives. We've got so many things going on in our lives. I've got so many things going, so many things going on in my life right now. Lay your letter before the Lord. Go to him in prayer. Let him do for you what nobody else can do. And he will. Because he loves his people. We may not understand every plan that God has. But there's a plan and a purpose in everything that he does. And God will slay your enemies. He will slay your enemies. And you will be victorious. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I appreciate that, honey. I, I'm not, wouldn't dare try to add to what, what she has already said, but when she mentioned that this morning y'all about brother Darrell I'd, I've read that scripture six eight ten times over the years maybe more and and I just pictured Hezekiah that that scroll that she used that was a threat that letter was a threat and I said Lord how many times has Satan you know, spoke to me with a threat. And it's just like the Lord speaking, and when that thing, when that happens to us, y'all, it's just like saying, Father, do you see what he said to me? <laughs> That's what he did, and I'm not trying to add to what Liz has already beautifully brought out, but I thought I wanted, I wanted her to share that with the church tonight, that when, when Satan comes our way, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, that, and whatever comes our way in this life, the first place he went is he went, as Elizabeth said, he went to the temple where God was. And that's, where, that's what I want to do. I want to learn to take Satan's threats, his devices, his lies, everything I want to learn to take it before the Lord. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, tonight, Lord, for, uh, Lord, this good word, Lord, that you've allowed us to see and allowed us to hear. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for uh, Elizabeth, Lord, and her obedience and willingness, Lord, to share this. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would bless each family that's represented here tonight. Lord, I pray, Lord, that there is one here in this building Lord, as we must always invite, we must always, Lord, if there's one here in this building that uh, don't know you, maybe one that's watching by the way of social media, Lord, I would pray, Lord, that that person, that man, woman, boy, or girl, wherever, Lord, that this video may find itself, or even here tonight, that don't know you, and they're trying to fight it alone in this world, trying to take on Satan and his devices on 
uh, on our own ground. Lord God, I pray that that person, Lord, whoever they may be, would hand the letter over to you. Oh, what a brilliant illustration, Lord, that we can hand the entire letter of our life over to you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that if someone don't know you, that they would come to you tonight and ask and believe that you are who you say you are. That's all it takes. It does not take a fancy prayer. It does not take a uh, saying a bunch of fine words. But the Bible says, whosoever believes in the heart and confesses with the mouth that Jesus is who he says he is and that he arose from the dead shall be saved. Lord, I pray, Lord, that that is our that is our banner, that is our shout, Lord, in the days ahead that people would come to you. And Lord, last but not least, Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless West Franklin. Lord, lead us into these days ahead, into 2021. Heavenly Father, we do not know what's across the water. We do not know what's just around the corner. But Lord, we, Lord, as Hezekiah would, Lord, if you would teach us, Lord, to bear our petitions before you and to bring our letters, Lord, before you. When the enemy comes, and we, when he would come against our lives, when he would come against our homes, when he would come against our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, Lord, teach us, Lord, to lay it out between, Lord, where, the, where you dwell, Lord, between the cherubims, Lord. Lord, bless our church. Bless this country, Lord. And take us home safe. Lord, we love you and thank you until the next time, Lord, we have the privilege to worship. Lord, we're going to love you. Lord, help us to love you more tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank everyone for coming. Thank you if you're visiting for coming. Please come back and be with us again. You're dismissed. Thank you.